So Zaina, just talk to us a little bit about the data that we've seen recently out of the US and whether it changes anything about your mindset regarding cuts when they're coming and how many. Good morning, the, the data that is coming out, it's still mixed. We're seeing some data that is still strong from a consumption or um, from, uh, from uh, and ISM has shown a positive sign, as you previously mentioned, that um, inflation is expected to drop, but uh, all the figures are still mixed. Inflation is dropping, but not fast enough. So this being said, we think that nothing has changed, and we think that the cuts are expected to come, as, uh, as Powell said yesterday. They're expected to come, but later this year. What does that mean for economies around the world? Because we are seeing quite the amount of price pressure on some currencies. We're also seeing you know, a little bit of movement in bond markets around the world, local currency markets in particular. Absolutely. We're seeing some, like markets have had, uh, equities market have had a, a tremendous rally, uh, U.S. equities market, that is, a tremendous rally from the beginning of the year. From a bonds perspective, spreads are tight. All, this, all the widening in the treasuries is being absorbed by spreads. So bond market has also, have also had a strong rally. But you feel some nervousness in the market, and I think that the positioning should remain the same. Moving to this region, you know, we got PMI data out of the UAE and also Saudi Arabia yesterday. It disappointed a little bit, but we're still in pretty strong expansion territory. Do you see value here? Absolutely. We've had PMI data slightly lower than, than the previous month, but it's still tremendously strong, uh, which shows, which underlines the, the, strong, the strength of the economy both here and in Saudi. Do we see, do, uh, for, to answer your question with regards to positioning, uh, spreads are tight. They have been very tight. We've still, uh, the UAE is tighter than, than Saudi. This is because of the supply that is expected from Saudi and the potential geopolitical risk that is more there. Um, we don't think that there is upside for from here, but at the same time, we think the care is good, and we still favor um, the we still favor Saudi versus UAE because of the wideness and wideness and spread. But we we still watch for the supply. Yeah, I just wanted to ask you one more on that because Saudi is planning on expanding its debt capital markets really quite substantially and soon as well. Absolutely. Will there be opportunities? I mean, you say spreads are narrow, but if you like the economy and you like the companies that are maybe issuing, then you know, why not? Absolutely. Why not? <laughs> um, the sovereign has pointed towards issuing uh, issuance. They have, have, we've had a lot of issuance from the sovereign and the GRE. We expect more to come from uh, GREs and also from the sovereign. Uh, this is the thing that weighs on the spreads. Do we like? Yes. But we, since we're not into extending duration at this point, we're more into the five and ten years. So we're more cautious on going longer duration, specifically for the very high grade bonds that are very rate sensitive. So is there demand and is this is their appetite for Saudi, yes, and for the GCC in general, yes. Do we think this is going to continue, yes, but we remain cautious when it comes to duration. Turkey, big one. We saw sort of a surprise municipal election results. We're seeing, you know, massive inflation. You say that you're waiting for inflation to peak before you get more interested in Turkey. Absolutely. How on earth are we going to know when inflation is peaking? That's a very good question. So, <laughs> as you said, the, the election result were surprising, but we've had comments from uh, central bankers saying that they are they are adamant on continuing on watching inflation, which is something that the market has been waiting for for so long. So, uh, we think that this is positive. Uh, inflation is sticky. We've had a, the increase in minimum wage at the earlier this year. We're still waiting for it to trickle into the economy and to wait for inflation to peak. It is a tricky one, definitely, but I think stepping into early might backfire on the local currency. The bonds, the dollar bonds have had a very good rally so far. We don't think there's upside from here and we think a lot of supply is coming. What's the dynamic for somebody like you with Egypt right now? Because it has had a huge promise of an influx of money and cash and it looks like it's going to be on a much better footing as long as all of this is managed correctly. Does that mean that there will be value to be had in Egypt or are you waiting to see? On the dollar bonds, the rally that happened is significant. We don't think there's more um, tightening that's going to happen there, but the carry is still really interesting because we think that there, there are no negative catalysts in the short run, so might as well uh, take advantage of the carry. When it comes to the local currency trade, we, had, we have seen a lot of inflows there, but now I think it remains very tricky to see because we need to see the fiscal reform that would make the economy sustainable on the long run, uh, or else we're going to be having, facing the same issues we've been facing last year in uh, one or two years down the line. So this is the tricky part for, for us to look at. Uh, I, on the dollar bond, I think the, the advantage there would be if they actually perform a liability management and extend duration and make it less, uh, they, it reduce the liability walls that they have in, have in the coming years.